We are coming to you live today from Yates Chapel on the campus of Millsaps College in Jackson, Mississippi for a service. This has been many years in the dreaming and the making and we are so grateful that you have joined us today. Anticipating a future chapel, President Perigen invited some years ago Lisa Garvin, Terry Hudson, Ann Phelps, Lola Williamson, and others to contribute to a document that outlined the theological considerations of what a chapel might be at Millsaps College. The paper reads in part, our Wesleyan tradition invites us to create relationship and communities of hospitality. Communities that lift up human personality and diversity and encourage us to live in love and compassion rather than isolation and fear. Across our campus and among all our people, especially our students, we have the opportunity through outreach, worship experiences, and personal relationships to engage the spirit support growth in each person's faith, and inspire lives of authenticity. So today, we consecrate this sacred space. No longer a dream of President Perigen, Bob Adams, and others, but a reality made possible by the gifts, sweat, talent, and tenacity of many, many people. Dedicated to the invitation of our Wesleyan tradition to create communities of hospitality. Due to public health concerns, we do not have uh, an audience here with us today, but all of you are represented by the participants in this service. Many thanks to staff members Michael Stamey, John Sewell, Fonda Devereaux, Ruby Medlin, Elizabeth Henry, Sherry Johnson, Paige Swain Presley, and to faculty member Rachel Hurd, and to Lauren Ladner, class of 2022, to Rob Perigen, Bill McAlilly, and Stephen Cook, whose time and effort to be here is so greatly appreciated. And so filled with the energy of love, enlarged hearts, for all of humankind, may we celebrate together as we consecrate this sacred space. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now here we are, standing inside its doors. We have chosen and sanctified this place. It is here that people may stop and rest. We have chosen and sanctified this place. May those who rest here be secure and receive peace within these walls. We have chosen and sanctified this place. This is a day of rejoicing as we gather in God's love. May we open our hearts and minds to receive God's grace in this chosen and sanctified place.
Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us for this very special occasion. I'd like to begin by thanking our chapel staff, the Reverends Joey Shelton, Paige Swain Presley, Elizabeth Henry, and Sherry Johnson for not only planning and participating in the service, but also for offering extraordinary services of reflection every Wednesday at noon from here in Yates Chapel. On average, over 600 people are viewing these reflections each week, and it's been a touching way of bringing our community together during these challenging times. Thanks also to Professor Jonathan Trotter and the Millsap Singers who lend their beautiful voices to the weekly reflections, adding immeasurably to those services and to this one today. And thank you to Reverend Dr. Stephen Cook, a member of our Board of Trustees, and Bishop Bill McAlilly, alumnus of the college and former member of the Board of Trustees. Thank you for sharing your time and gifts with us today. From the earliest days of our thinking about the renovation of the Christian Center, we dreamed of a chapel at the heart of this building, a sacred anchor in a center that would also house our humanities division. We believed that locating the departments of English and history, Greek and Roman studies, philosophy and religious studies under the same roof as a chapel and our chaplaincy would be a meaningful reminder of how reason and faith the mind and the heart may coexist in a world that so often tries to pull them apart. That dream has come true with this beautiful space we consecrate today as Yates Chapel, made possible by the William G. Yates family. William Yates III served on our Board of Trustees from 2008 to 2016, and it was during his service that he and his family Believing that Millsaps needed a chapel worthy of the college's historic relationship with the United Methodist Church offered the financial support to make possible this sacred space. So now, thanks to William and his parents, Bill and Nancy, and the Yates family, the trustees of the Selby and Richard McRae Foundation, Chuck Latham, Tara and Mark Freeman, and many other generous benefactors, we stand here in Yates Chapel in the newly renovated Selby and Richard McRae Christian Center and prepare to sanctify this space as holy and consecrated for the worship of God and the service of all people. For the first time in Millsap's 130-year history, we now have a large, dedicated space that supports the college's varied expressions of religious and spiritual life and community worship. We now have a place for formal liturgy, special prayer services, sacred music, traditional lessons and carols, and much more. This space allows our students to connect their intellectual, spiritual, and moral commitments and provides a place for deep reflection for the entire campus community. And as we hoped from the beginning, this space represents how the mind and the heart, reason and faith, might be joined in learning in the pursuit of the most important questions in life. This special place also represents the fundamental value of human relationships and the importance of gathering together in times of great joy and celebration, as well as times of deep sadness and grief. In designing this chapel and placing it in the heart of a building that is a touchstone of our identity as a college, we very much had in mind happy occasions when songs of joy and shouts of praise would reverberate around this room through its halo light and into its 40-foot dome. But we also had in mind a space for our community to gather in times of sadness, to hold on to one another, to pray, when the campus or the world seemed to be falling apart, like today, as health and financial and inequality pandemics sweep across the globe. And so this space is here, albeit mostly virtual for now, both to celebrate as we do today and to provide shelter and consolation in times of trouble. Finally, this space, this sacred space, represents hope. 
hope for this college's bright and promising future. We would not have built this extraordinary chapel were we not excited and confident about our continued and future leadership in higher education. Hope for the lives and futures of our students who will find here a spiritual home and true nourishment within these walls. And hope for our world. A world that today is weary, but is also resilient and reinforced by sacred spaces such as this that inspire people toward grace and compassion and love. The writer of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament describes hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. May the hope represented by this chapel help anchor our souls in the days to come. May reason and faith dwell together in unity here within these walls. And may this chapel be a place of joy and comfort, grace and love for generations to come. Thank you. Dr. Cook, I present this chapel to be consecrated for the worship of God and the service of all people. President Perigin, by what name shall this chapel be known? It shall be called Yates Chapel. Eternal God, by the power of your spirit, concentrate this place of worship. Bless and sanctify every work of worship here so that this place may be holy and a house of prayer for all people. By the same spirit, guide and empower in Yates Chapel, the proclamation of your word, the pouring out of prayer, the singing of your praise, testimonies to your grace, and the celebration of covenant and life. Save us from that failure of vision which would confine our worship within these walls. But send us from here to be your servants in the world, sharing your redemptive grace. Now, O oh God, sanctify this place, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Amen. Our scripture for today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 63, verses 1 through 4. O oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good afternoon. It's my privilege to be a part of this consecration of the Yates Chapel. I would like to begin with a personal word of appreciation to the Yates family. From 1994, 1990 to 1994, I was the pastor at First United Methodist Church, Philadelphia, Mississippi, where I was the pastor of the Yates family, Bill and Carol, and uh, William, Bill and Nancy, William and Carol, and Gully and Opal. All were very special friends of mine, and uh, it's a privilege to and an honor to be a part of this consecration. It's a great day in the life of Millsaps College, in the life of Mississippi Methodism, and in the life of this family. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me and for me now? O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter in every storm of life, and our eternal home. We pause and give you great thanks today for the gift of this place, 
for its holiness and its sanctuary. We pray, O oh God, that those who come within these walls might find solace, might find hope, might find strength, might find courage. Most of all, we pray, O oh God, that they will find purpose for the living of these days. So now, gather up all of our hearts and minds, our thoughts and our feelings, as we give thanks today and give you praise for this very special place. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. If you were a freshman, say in 1974, excited, frightened, hopeful, alone, if you were a person searching to find one's place on a college campus, and if you had a religious bone in your body from somewhere in your past, and if you from time to time needed a place to be still and be quiet, to pray and to listen, and if you didn't know any better and wandered into the Christian Center looking for such a place, your confusion and disappointment would grow exponentially. I did have such a memory of faith in my roots as I came to Millsap's campus as a freshman. I was anything but sure on my path or the journey my path, my future might take. And for a season or two, maybe three, I wandered here on this campus in and out of various departments looking for my future. I wandered my first semester in college into the geology department where Dr. Wendell Johnson said to this class of physical geology 101, I'm here to tease you from time to time on what might be a course in physical geology. Which translated, I'm going to give you a lot of tests this year and see if you can cut the mustard. Well, I didn't, and I wandered then over to the accounting department and spent a season over there trying to figure out the difference between a debit and a credit. And finally, I wandered into Dr. T.W. Lewis's office in the religion department here in this very building and said to Dr. Lewis, I need you to help me find my way. I believe God has something in store for me with my life. Can you give me some guidance? And that began my path of spending most of my college career here at Millsaps in this very building, still looking for a chapel. I did take comfort, though, in that axiom that all who wander are not lost. And I give thanks to God that my roots were formed deeply in the philosophy department, in the religion department, in the ethics courses I took. For those who, on either side of 1974, give or take 45 years, this moment, this place is a Bethel. A Bethel in the Old Testament is a place where the people of God would stop on their journey toward the promised land. It would be a place, and they would place that holy place with a marker and it became a Bethel, a holy space. And so this day we come in this space, this chapel, and we consecrate this building, this worshiping space as a Bethel. Generously made possible by the Yates family and now a place for Millsap students to come, faculty to come, staff to come, to sit and pray, to meditate, to grieve, to mourn, to worship, to listen, to listen for the still, small voice of God. It is the place that when the community gathers for worship, students' lives will be shaped, formed by a narrative that is rooted in the story of God that holds our lives deeply and profoundly, reminding us that we are not alone. This place, this Bethel, set apart for the holy and profound, becomes a beacon on this campus for generations to come. This dome will be a shining light to this community for hope and purpose. For the gift of this holy place with the psalmist, I give praise to God. In the days to come, hopefully sooner than later, students will come, faculty, staff, friends, will sit here they will come because within their souls there is a deep longing and a thirst for God's presence. They will come because like St. Augustine, perhaps their hearts are restless until they find rest in God. They will come because there is in every one of us an insatiable need to know. 
And while there is the pursuit of the intellect on this campus and other spaces and places, at the end of the day, only true knowing comes through the voice of God. In the 1970s, this will date some of us, there was a popular song that made it on the pop charts that really was more of a faith song, one that could in these days be termed as contemporary Christian music. Day by day, perhaps you remember the simple chorus. To see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, to follow thee more nearly, day by day. I suspect that this prayer has been prayed somewhere on this campus for generations. And yet now, those of us who have this longing, this yearning, this urge to pray this way, seeking to know God, seeking to hear God's still small voice giving direction to one's life can come here and sit and meditate and listen. A gathering place to acknowledge our need for one another, our need for God, our need for God's direction in our lives. I am convinced that for every college student there comes a moment, a turning, a point, an aha, when having wandered like the psalmist in the wilderness, when, time, when things seem to have lost their way, we come home to ourselves. We come home to God. And we begin to ask the deeper questions of life. God, what now do you require of me? And there's a shift. There is a moment, a shape that begins to unfold in our lives, and this space, this chapel, this Bethel, if you will, will make space as a container for the spirit of questing for those who come by here. In the days to come, there will be those who come behind us. They will come and experience God's infinite mercy and grace and will respond with the psalmist in community offering thanksgiving and praise to God. There will be doxology in this place. I do not know if my wandering journey as a Millsaps freshman would have been shaped differently if there had been a beautiful chapel such as this on this campus where all of my anxieties might have found shape and form. But what I do know is this. For those who come this way in the future, this sacred place will provide a space for a deepened life in the heart of God. And this holy place, this Bethel, will be one of the markers on the journey, making space for our students to become all that God intends. In the end, that's all we can ask of a place to help us be shaped, to be formed, to come to know ourselves as God's own and follow closely in the journey God intends for our lives. I give thanks to God for this journey and this place. Amen.
prophet Micah says, what does the Lord require of us but to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with our God? May those who come this way sit in this place, worship in this sanctuary, hear that word as a call, as a commission to do justice, to love kindness, and always to walk humbly wherever God may lead us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.